Everybody needs a task manager to stay organized and to get stuff done. And the best task manager for most people is Things 3. I love this app so much that not only do I run my entire life on it, I also created an entire self-paced video course on this app, which now over a thousand paying students have enrolled in. So let me show you how to set up Things 3 from scratch. We'll start over here on my computer, but Things is also available for your iPhone and your iPad. It's not available on any devices that are not Apple devices, by the way. Um, the interface is very similar on iPhone and iPad and the computer. I'll show you on my MacBook Pro. I'm here in the inbox and I'm just gonna start writing down some things that I want to do, totally unrelated to anything that I can think of. The inbox is the place to put stuff that you haven't organized yet. Okay, here are some things I wanna do. I wanna invite my grandma over for dinner. I want to... Um, send last month's business receipts to my bookkeeper. I want to um, build my, or I say finish building my new home office slash studio, which is where I'm sitting right now. It's, we just moved and it's a new place. And I haven't finished it yet. Um, I want to do a couple other things. I want to buy some new shoes and I want to tell Sharon about that interesting article I read earlier today. So these are a bunch of things that I want to do. They're currently sitting in the inbox, which is where things go that you haven't bothered to organize yet. But the whole point of a task manager is that it helps you be more organized and get stuff done. So what are we going to do? We're going to create an organization for our life. We're gonna divide our life into what things call different areas. And for most people, there's a couple of areas you could get started with that really work nicely. If you go to the bottom left and click new list, you'll see that there's two options. For now, we're gonna choose new area, which says group your projects and to-dos based on different responsibilities, such as family or work. So I'm going to create an area called admin and finances. I will create another area that I'm going to call home. I, look, I like to have them drag alphabetically, so I'm, you know, so I'm dragging it down here. I'm going to create one called relationships. Relationships. I'm going to create one called health. And I'm going to create one called work. Now, you can create more areas if you want to know really the areas that I recommend for most people. You can check out my course, but we'll start with these five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the inbox and we're just going to simply drag these tasks over to the relevant area. So buy some new shoes. I think of that as a home stuff, kind of a clothing thing. So I'm going to drag it over to home. Oh, home should be underneath health, by the way, um, for it to be alphabetical. Finish building out my new home office slash recording studio is also a home thing. So I'm just going to drag it in there. Okay. Send last month's business receipt to my bookkeeper. That is an admin and finances task. I'll show you a different way of moving that. If you use the keyboard shortcut command shift M for move, you can just start typing admin and finances and then hit return or enter and you'll see that it is moved to the correct area. Back to the inbox, let's do the last two tasks. Invite my grandma over for dinner. That's one of those typical relationships tasks. And tell Sharon about that interesting article I read earlier today is also a relationships task. So task. We're going to hit OK. Now, if I go to the admin and finances area, you'll see that this task sits in here. Same thing for the relationships area. You'll see that these two tasks are here. Um, and I guess we don't have a work area yet, but a task I might create is film a YouTube video on getting started with Things 3 in 2022, which is what I am doing right now. OK, we've got these areas and these are for the high level overview of your life. Now, sometimes you'll find that something is a project. It is a collection of tasks that contribute to one specific outcome. So, for example, finish building my new home office slash studio. That has a bunch of sub steps, right? I don't just, you know, flick my fingers and it's done. It's a project. And that's if we go back to that new list button at the bottom left. And we look, the other option here was to create a new project. It says define a goal and work towards it one to do at a time. Goals and projects are actually not the same thing. We'll get to that later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this task and you'll see that there's an option convert to project. So I'm going to click that now. Yes, I want to convert. Now this is a project and you'll see that this project looks like this. It has a little circle and it sits underneath the home area. So if I click the home area, you can actually see that I have a task sitting directly inside the home area, but I also have a project that lives inside the home area and I can double click the project to enter the project. And now I can list tasks here that together comprise the project. So for example, it might be put up the pegboard on the back wall. They'll be behind me. <laughs> um, 
tape the LED light strip to the back wall also. I can come up with a few more things. I can say, um, put up the sound dampening panels on the side wall. I can come up with a bunch of tasks that I need to do. As I start working through these tasks later, I start checking them off, which is really simple. You just hit this checkbox and you'll see that this circle up here is partially filled. And once you've actually completed all of these tasks, you'll see that the project shows as totally complete and you can click the button here and it will disappear. So it's a really neat way to organize things. I'm going to undo that now. So I'm hitting Command Z a few times so that this project lives again like this. And you can see now if we go to the home area, you can see that this project lives here. You see a nice three count that says, hey, this project has three tasks inside of it. Now, that's what projects are, okay? Um, let me explain to you next what these different views are that we have on the side, because they really are views. Like I said, the inbox is where you put stuff when maybe you're on the go and you want to remember something to do later, you quickly enter it probably on your phone, but you don't feel like organizing it. You just put it in the inbox. Once a week, you're going to then take stuff out of the inbox and organize it into the different categories in a weekly review which is something that I also talk about in my course. So I don't have time to talk about that right now, but that's a very important part of building a things three workflow. So what are these other views that we have here? There is a today view, an upcoming view, an anytime view, a someday view, and then there's a logbook, which is less important. Let's start with a today view. This is the list of tasks and projects that you are intending to work on today. Okay, so let's say, hey, today I want to send last month's business receipts to my bookkeeper. I can simply drag that over to the today view. And then if I, you'll see that it gets this star over here. And if I go to the today view, you'll see that here this task now shows under today and it's actually already grouped by area. You'll see that it sits under the admin and finances area. So if I take a different task, like invite my grandma over for dinner, and I also assign that to today, which I'm going to do with another keyboard shortcut, which is Command S, brings up this when panel, and then I can either click today or type today, which is very cool. There's many ways to move things around in things three. You'll see again, it gets the star and it lives under today. And my today tasks, the ones I'm planning to work on today are organized by area and it looks really nice. Now here's a tip, if you don't like this way of organizing, you can open the things preferences and you can actually click this button right here that says group to do's in the today list by project or area. You can uncheck that and now your tasks show up like this. You can still see which project or area they're in, but now you can drag them around. This is handy if you want to do your tasks in a specific order. But I like to have things grouped by project or area. I just find that it looks neat. Okay, so this is how the today view works. So you can just drag something into today or assign a date of today. But we need to talk about dates a little bit more. Let's say I've got this task over here to send last month's business receipt to my bookkeeper. First, I'm going to remove it from today. I'm going to hit Command S and click Clear, just because I want to explain to you something about how this works. In things, you've got two types of dates. There's the so-called when, dates, which is when are you planning on doing this? When are you intending to do this? And then there is the deadline. And the deadline is when does this absolutely need to be done by? Okay, those things are different. So for example, let's say my bookkeeper needs to file my tax return and, and she needs this data from me, um, let's say on the 20th of March. Okay, then the deadline, which by the way, <laughs> this is how you get to the deadline, you just double click a task, you'll see this panel open. And then there's a bunch of buttons. The first one is for the when date. The second one is to assign tags, which I don't wanna get into right now. Again, you can learn more about that if you want to checklist, which also I won't get into right now. And then you have the deadline. So let's click deadline. And I'm going to say the 20th of March is the deadline. So you see now it says the deadline is Sunday, the 20th of March. There's 18 days left from the day I'm recording this video. That's the last absolute last possible day that I need to do this because otherwise she won't be able to file my tax return on time. Maybe I will get fines or penalties or something. There's a real big consequence if I don't do this task by then. That's what the deadline is for. What happens when I put a deadline? It just shows up, uh, up right here. Now I can say, hey, I'm planning to do this task today, okay? I'm planning to do this task today, even though the last possible day when I'll do it is Sunday, March 20th. And now, if I assign, if I set things up this way, you'll see that the task still shows up under today because I'm planning to work on it today, even though it's not technically due until March 20th, okay? That's how that works. Now, this relates to a different view in things, which is the upcoming view. So if I click the upcoming view in the top left here, this shows you what tasks you have coming up. Okay, 
Um, so you'll see that today doesn't show up, but tomorrow does, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with the dates right of the month attached. Now, let me just go in and change that deadline. Let's say this deadline was actually um, the 13th of March, okay? And now I go back to upcoming. You'll see that this task automatically shows up under upcoming on the 13th of March. That's the last possible day you could do it. I can actually then drag it around. So it shows up under March 13th. Well, you see here, things start, shows you things for about a week ahead of time. Um, and then it starts to compress things by month a little bit. So we can actually change this for a little bit sooner and say, let's, let's say this is due like in four days. And you'll see now the task shows up on Sunday. What does that mean? On Sunday, this task is going to show up in your today view. Things is going to say, hey, this is due today. You better work on it today. That's great because you want to make sure you get stuff done on time. This is a really great way to look forward and not always do things last minute. But if you do say, hey, you know what? I probably shouldn't leave this task until the last possible day to do it because that's a bad habit to get into. You can simply drag it to a different day. You can say, actually, I'll do this tomorrow. What does that do? Now, if I go back to admin and finances where this task lives, you'll see that this task has been scheduled for Thursday. So that's the power of the dates in things. You've got this intent date, the when date, and the deadline. There are two different things. In the course, I go over much more detail of how all this stuff works, but this is the basics so you understand how that works. And the upcoming view really helps you see what's coming up, make sure you don't forget stuff. Now, nice thing about things three is you can also show your calendar events in the upcoming view. So you go to the things preferences, then you go over to this calendar tab over here and you can check this box. It says show calendar events in today and upcoming lists. And then you check whatever calendars you have that whose events you want to see inside the upcoming thing. So that's what I've done here right now. And now you'll see that tomorrow at 4 p.m. I have a haircut. And actually, if I go back to the today view, you'll see that two of my um, appointments on my calendar today are also listed here. Super convenient. There's a big difference between tasks and calendar events. Tasks are things that you do, but you know, not necessarily at a specific time. And calendar events are things that, hey, you have an appointment with someone, a meeting, you gotta be somewhere at a specific time. Now I wanna talk to you about the anytime and someday views because these are really important. Let's do someday first. Let's say that I have a task that I would like to do someday. I'm not sure exactly when. Let me give you an example. I go back under the home area and I have some old hard drives from an old computer that at some point I would like to recycle. So I'm going to say recycle old hard drives. Okay, it's something I should do at some point, but it's not urgent. I don't really need to do it anytime soon. What am I going to do? I'm going to assign this to the someday bucket. So again, I could either drag it into someday or I can hit the command S keyboard shortcut to bring up this panel and I can just type someday and then hit enter. You'll see that within the area, it gets put under this separate heading. But also if I go to the someday view, you'll see that it lives here now. So someday is your collection of things that you would like to do someday in the future, but not necessarily anytime soon. A good rule of thumb from me, advice to you is to be quite aggressive with this. As you put tasks inside things, ask yourself, am I probably not going to work on this in the next two weeks? If you're probably not going to work on it in the next two weeks, just chuck it in someday, okay? All right, so the final view we have is the anytime view. The anytime view shows you things that you could work on anytime. And really it is tasks that you haven't scheduled for a specific date and that don't live in someday. So you'll see that all of my tasks show up in here, except the task of sending last month's business receipts to my bookkeeper, which I said I'm going to do Thursday and accept the task of recycling my old hard drives, which I've said I will do someday. All the other tasks show up in here. So what is a good daily workflow like in Things 3? A great daily workflow in Things 3 is to go in the morning or the night before into your anytime view and say, hey, what are some things that I'd like to work on today or tomorrow? You know, this is all the things that make sense to work on. Let's pick a couple. Let's say I'm gonna do this one today and I'm gonna do this one today. I'm just going to drag those into today. Now, this is the list I'm working through. And then you start working through those things. Now you also might want to take a quick look at what's coming up just to make sure you don't do everything last minute. Now, there's a lot, a lot, a lot more to learn about things three. For example, how to do weekly reviews, how to save time and make fewer errors with project templates, how to use tags, how to use checklists and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, oh, a really important one, important one that I should tell you about is why you shouldn't put 
goals inside things three and what you should do instead. So real quick teaser, a lot of people will create tasks inside their things three that are like, you know, get fit, right? Um, or lose weight. But those kinds of things are goals, not tasks. You don't want to put them in things three, but there's something else that you do want to do. Now, if you want to learn about all these other things, do check out my self-paced video course on things three. It is called Organize Your Life with Things Three. And the link to that is, of course, in the description below the video. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you inside the course. Bye.